Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at standard form word problems. So this is going from calculations in the previous video to word problems now. So we're going to put a little bit more of a real life application to our sorts of calculations. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, compare your solutions. If you've got any problems, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. I'll always come back to you. Also, you can download this particular worksheet from the website by following the link below. I look forward to seeing you inside the video. Hi, in this particular video, we're looking at standard form word problems. This leads on from the standard form calculations that we did in the previous video. However, it is still non-calculator. You're going to need to show you're working. And probably these types of questions are going to be three to four marks on a non-calculator paper. OK, so the first one is a uh, number of atoms in one kilogram of helium is that. Calculate number of atoms in 30 kilograms of helium give your answer in standard form so basically what we're saying is is that if the number of atoms in one kilogram is 1.53 times 10 to the power of 26 we're now actually going to multiply that by 30 in order to get the answer okay so the way i'm going to approach this i'm, I'm going to completely ignore the standard form part of it and instead i'm going to multiply 1.53 times 30 okay now you might do your calculations slightly differently to me i would basically have 153 times 30 like that you might do it by partitioning or something like that that's perfectly fine doesn't really matter providing your uh, the way that you do these calculations is consistent okay so zero times three zero times five zero times one is zero i'm now going to multiply by the three tens so a zero in the units three threes are nine three times five is 15 carry one three times three is there <laughs> okay so it's actually going to be because i've moved the decimal point two places it's going to be two places so 45.9 so the answer to this would be 45.9 times 10 to the power of 26 now if it is a let's say a three mark question this would give you two marks so far because you need to make sure you put it in standard form we need to move the decimal point one more place so it becomes 4.59 times 10 to the power of 27 and that would be the answer to that particular question okay so the next one now this is uh, one of those questions where uh, a little bit trickier because effectively we're not going to be multiplying they're working out the combined population so therefore we need to add those so really the only way to do this is to make both of these numbers the actual numbers or both of the standard forms in their number form so this one is going to be six four and i've moved the decimal point seven places or well, one of them to get to the four and then another six zeros afterwards now i have spaced these out a little bit so hopefully you can see what's going on here and we follow the same principle for the population of sweden now in this particular case i know it's going to be one jump and then five zeros afterwards so it's actually going to be nine seven followed by one two three four five zeros and all we're doing is actually adding those two together okay so the zeros are fine we've got zero 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 and zero then we've got seven okay nine and four is going to be 13 so i write down the three carry the one and six add one is seven so that's the actual number but we've been asked to give the answer in standard form so i'm going to put the decimal point here so it's going to be 7.37 and then i've moved the decimal point once twice 
three, four, five, six, seven places. So times 10 to the power of seven, and that would be the answer to that particular question. Okay, let's look out the differences now. So the difference is going to be a subtraction. Okay, so actually we can write exactly the same sum. It's going to be six, four, followed by six zeros, three, four, five, six, and then nine, seven, followed by five zeros. OK, but in this particular case now, I've got to subtract them. OK, well, taking away the zeros is fairly easy, so I can do all of that. OK, and then it comes to, in this particular case, zero take away seven. Now, I use the borrow method. So what I basically say is that I'm going to make that three and make that 10. So 10 take away seven is going to be three. Then I've got three take away nine. Can't do that. Going to borrow again. That becomes five and that becomes 13. So I've got four and then five. Now, again, you might have a slightly different way of doing it. Perfectly fine. Not a problem. Uh, you just need to make sure at the end that you give your answer in standard form. So I'm going to put my decimal point in here. It becomes 5.43. And then I've moved it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times. Times 10 to the power of 7. And that would be the answer to that particular question. OK, on to question three of the standard form word problems. Now, this particular one is a non-calculator, so please do stop the video. Have a go at each of the questions uh, or have a go at this particular question, then compare your solution. OK, so there's a little bit of work that we need to do with this one. Is it takes eight minutes for light to travel from the sun to the earth. Speed of light is that metres per second. Work out the distance in kilometres. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is that effectively 3 times 10 to the power of 8 is exactly the same as saying 3 with eight zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now that is going to be meters per second. Okay, so in order to make my calculation a little bit easier, I'm going to change it now to kilometers per second. And there are a thousand meters in a kilometer. So if I move this back and by divide, if I'm dividing by a thousand, I move it three places. So now I've got three and one, two, three, four, five zeros. So three, one, two, three, four, five zeros. And that's going to be kilometers per second. OK, hopefully that's all right for you. Now, we're getting a little bit closer, but we're being asked or we're being told that it takes eight minutes for light to travel. So actually, kilometers per second isn't that helpful to us. What we need is kilometers per minute. And there are 60 seconds in a minute. So basically, if I take this number and then multiply it by 60, that's going to give me kilometers per minute. So that's one, two, three, four, five multiplied by 60. And that's going to give me kilometers per minute. All right. So how do we do that calculation? Well, all we do really is we do three times six is going to be 18. And then we count the number of zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's going to be kilometers per minute. All right. So 18 million kilometers per minute. OK, sounds amazingly fast, doesn't it? OK, so we're being asked then to work out the distance. Well, we know it's going to travel 18 million kilometers in one minute. Um, so therefore, if I multiply that now by eight minutes, then I'm going to work out the distance in kilometers. So let's have a look at doing that. OK, so I've got 18 million. OK, multiplied by oops, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm so sorry. Let me just rub that one out. OK, <laughs> all right. 18 million multiplied by eight. And that's going to give me the actual distance. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to do the same similar sort of calculation that I did before in that I'm going to actually ignore the zeros. I'm just going to do 18 times eight. OK, so 18 times eight, eight times eight is 64, four to carry, 
one four four okay now again you might do a slightly different calculation to me but that's perfectly fine because what we end up with is one four four and then six zeros one two three four five six and that is the distance in kilometers okay which actually answers the question other than they said can we give it in standard form which would be quite common to do that well i would then write that as 1.44 and i've moved the decimal point three four five six seven eight times ten to the power of eight and that would be kilometers and that's the answer to this particular question okay i hope this uh, video has been helpful to you if you're not sure about anything always add a comment below and always come back to please do add a like if it's been helpful and i'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video